Boy, one of my, uh, well, first, Heidi Ho, everybody. Um, Heidi Ho, my peeps. <laughs> okay. Um, one of my viewers, Kiki, sent me a comment today about how I never showed you guys the patio furniture that my son and I picked up for free when we were, um, when we were trashing last year. That's one of the chairs. All right. Brace yourselves, everybody. You are going to see what it looks like when the coyote spins summer inside. This is what happens to the yard. It gets very, very thrashed. All right, oh well, look what happened here. My jade plant, which used to be very tall, got torn up by the dogs. There's pieces of jade plant, but I can just stick those down in dirt and they'll keep growing. Okay, um, things are looking bad. They're looking bad on the homestead. Yeah, they are. I'm not gonna trip too hard. Oh, look how nicely my, I hardly had any of those the last time. They're looking good now. Um, so, what the hell is that? Oh, that's part of a pumpkin. Okay, look at how sad this looks. Isn't that sad? My poor sewing machine got knocked over and shat upon by birds. <laughs> oh, Lord. Okay. Now, okay, here's the rest of it. Let's start over there. Oh, let's move this out of the way. Okay, there's the other, ch oh, there's the other chair. There's the, like, coffee table thing. Here is the side table. And then... There is the, what do you call that? Love seat, love seat sort of thing. Um, it's got this, you know, this sort of fake rock and tile top. Nice, very nice. Just very, very nice. It deserves a better setting than this. Okay, I see something that's gonna irritate me. The this thing is dripping. All right, having a dripping thing isn't necessarily a bad situation, but what's bad is when it isn't dripping into a, um, it needs to be dripping into a, oh, you know, a plant of some kind. So I think, I'm gonna have it drip. Where should I have it drip? How about out here? I think it should drip over here. Yep. Yep. Oops, that's not gonna work. How about right here for the time being? We'll let it drip into that, into that for a while. Okay. Anyhow, so there it is. There's the patio set. And now I'm going to make my way back up the up the rather frightening steps here. You always want to steady yourself because these get slimy in the wet. And, and here we go. Oh, something else. Oh no, that's for Facebook. Never mind. You guys won't care about that. So anyway, here's how thrashed the patio's gotten in the nearly one year that it's been since I've done much cleaning out here. But, you know, I can fix that. I can, I can come out here and fix this. It's not irreparable, right? Right. Okay, now we're going to start the rest of the video. First of all, I want you to take a peeky poo at this office chair that I bought on wheels, of course. It's dirty and stained, I don't care. This is one of those really nice office chairs that have all sorts of adjustments underneath. You can do all kinds of stuff with it. Um, it's obviously old. 
Somebody spilled something on it or peed on it. I don't know. I don't care because it is so comfortable. This is exactly what I needed in here. Now, I paid 25 bucks for this at a freaking Goodwill. I know that sounds ridiculous, but when you spend as much time sitting as I do, you need a chair or actually uh, an entire herd of chairs that fits you, is comfortable, that's adjustable, that doesn't make your back hurt, that you can do everything you need to do in. And that's what this chair does. Okay, now we're going to get on to the other stuff. Okay, peeps, you've seen the patio furniture. You've seen my new chair that probably seems overpriced, but really isn't because it's incredibly comfortable, incredibly bouncy. Now you need to look at my... Uh, I'm sorry? I'm channeling Aunt B here. I just love this. Um, the reason I've got my hair up in this weird little style is because I'm trying to learn how to use these hairpins. Now, hairpins are a little bit before my time. Um, my mom never used these. She always used bobby pins if she was going to pin up her hair. So um, I found out some in interesting information about hairpins and bobby pins. Of course, hairpins like this, you know, these things, these have been around since Egyptian days or before. They've found them in, you know, in, in uh, you know, Egyptian graves. Well, bobby pins, on the other hand, let's see where I'm going to put this. Oh, right here. Okay, bobby pins were invented in the, um, in 1899, and they were invented as a way of ho holding a bobbed haircut in place. You couldn't use these hairpins on short hair. You had to have something with grip. And a bobby pin, of course, is the other kind that grips hard. Um, so they invented them at the end of the 1800s. Then around 1920 or so, they become super. They, they became super popular because that's when women really started to cut their hair. So that's the difference between hairpins and bobby pins. I didn't know until I looked it up. And um, that's so that's the hair. That's the excuse for the weird hair. Okay. As you all know, or most of you know, I was at Leanne's over the weekend um, with Grant. We had such a great time. We came in um, Saturday in the afternoon, um, hung around for a little while. Leanne and I went and did some, um, what did we do? We went and did something. And then we came back and picked up the boys and her mom and um, her son and his girlfriend. And we all went to the Thai restaurant and we had like a family style Thai dinner. It was wonderful. She did a video on her channel, um, Leanne Live. I should probably link that video below. I'll try to remember to link the video below. Anyway, um, so it was just so much fun. And then we came home and went to sleep and I had a very hard night. I just didn't sleep well. Grant was sleeping out in the living room on a couch and I was sleeping in the twin bed in the, um, in the guest room. Um, it's a very comfortable room. I really like the room and I like the bed. It wasn't that. It was just that I was, I was kind of, I just wasn't feeling all that swell over the weekend. So anyway, um, the next day we went to, she and I got up and went to Pandora and I bought her Pandora charm. There is a uh, video associated with that Pandora charm, which I will also link if I could remember to in the description bar here. And um, it was kind of funny because she wanted this charm badly. And the reason she wanted it was because the it's, it, was a, it was a charm commemorating Snow White. It's a Disney charm. And it was a dangle charm. So it had a red apple, a little pink heart, like cubic zirconia thing, and then a what she calls a casket, because it kind of looks like a casket that you bury somebody in. But it actually represents the wooden box that held the pig heart that the woodsman used to fake out the evil queen who'd who'd sent him off to bring her the heart of Snow White. Well, when he got there, of course he couldn't do it. He had a he had a moment of conscience, so he left her alone and got the pig heart. We those of you who know the story, well, we all know that. Well, um, 
part of why Leanne wanted to buy this charm, why, why she felt attached to it, was because of the little casket. Now, most of you guys know she works in the funeral industry, and um, she felt a, an affinity for this little casket thing. She thought it was not exactly funny, but a um, sort of a little winking tribute to what she does for a living. But she also felt like it was a very dark. She, you know, the the story is very dark, particularly that part where the woodsman sent out to kill her and he can't do it, so he brings the pig heart instead. Um, that's pretty grim and gritty stuff. Um, but hey, that's the Brothers Grimm. <laughs> All their stuff is grim and gritty. <laughs> Anyhow, <laughs> and Disney sanitized it so much that they hardly even tell the real story. But the, the general, they hit the general high points of the story. Anyhow, point is, um, Leanne likes to surround herself with happy things, happy thoughts, happy references, as so many of us do. And that kind of grim aspect of, of the story and of the charm kind of bothered her. So she wasn't so sure how she felt about wearing it, keeping it, whatever. And so I made up a story on the spot about why she should keep it. <laughs> and it's a story, but it's also kind of true. I mean, it's not kind of, I mean, it's, it's entirely true. Um, and what I told her was the apple represents all of life's adversities, the people that come after you, handicaps that you're born with, all of the stuff you have to deal with in order to stay alive and healthy and happy throughout your 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 life. It's all encased in this apple. Also, the um, the the heart in the casket. What that represents to me is our soul and our personhood, our happiness, um, all that is makes us good and human, that needs to be protected. And that's what the casket is all about, the wooden box. It's about protecting your heart, protecting yourself from this, the other part of life, which is the apple part, the, the poison part that you have to somehow work your way through. And... Um, and 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 so I told her, you know, the thing I like about that is because this represents a balanced life. It's not this charm doesn't represent all of just the happy parts, just the giggle Disneyland ride parts. It represents both sides. And I love balance. I really like light and dark together because that's. That's that's the human condition is we have we deal with both. And I told her that's why I like it. It's 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 it it's it's sort of representative of the stuff that all human beings go through, at least all human beings that I know. I'm not gonna speak for, you know Stone Age tribes living in the Amazon, but I'm gonna guess they go through the same thing. Anyhow. So um I was much more eloquent when I, when I told her this stuff the first time. But that's the cliff notes of how I tried to explain to her, no, this is not a dark or evil thing. This is a, this is a good thing. It's, it's a, you know, it's something we can all relate to. So, um, so she, she put that on video. So you can, you can hear me say the story a little bit better somewhere else. Um, so yeah, whatever. What else? Um, so we left Pandora. We picked up the guys. We went to Daiso. Went shopping there. I got stuff. I'm gonna show you. And then they we went to grocery outlet. I did. I stayed in the car. Grocery outlet. There was wasn't anything I needed, and I had my phone with me and stuff. Oh, I know. We also went to Michael's. That's what we did because she wants me to recreate that hoodie red snood thing um i've got it right here um she got this at a winery Let's see if i can put it on without tearing down my aunt b hair okay all right so she got this thing at a winery whoa where's the deal okay here we go 
and she likes to wear it when she's, <laughs> you know, going to work or whatever. Yeah, I don't have it on. Obviously, it's Caddy Wampus, but she wants another one of these, and she wanted it in purple. So, we went to um, to Michael's, and I bought, or rather, she bought this beautiful deep amethyst color purple yarn. It's nice and soft, and I I deconstructed the pattern for this. Did all my figured out what stitches they were using and you know how big it needed to be. Then I spent some time um, equalizing the gauge um, between this yarn and the needle they used and the yarn we bought and the needle I'm using. Then I had to make you know a number of adjustments so that it's going to be exactly the same size. So anyway, um, that is a project I'm going to be working on in front of the fire in the evenings, and I'm real excited about that. So. Okay, so then um, we drove home last night, got home around midnight. It was a beautiful, quiet, lovely drive. No fog, no rain. It was just really nice. I had such a great time, and I'm so glad Grant came with me. It's, it's always more fun when he's with me, so that was real neat. Um, oh, and one other place we went to, obviously, because I told you about the chair, we went to the Goodwill. Um, we did that the night that... Um, that we got in and it was just Leanne and I. So let me show you the other things I got at the Goodwill. First of all, I found leggings, fleece line leggings in my size. I've seen these before at, um, let's see. Right. Well, I'll just take them out. I've seen, and they were six bucks. I've seen them before at, um, 99 cent store um i've seen them there for like four dollars or five dollars and um they never have my size of course i wear a 3x 4x but see there this is all fleece lined in here they're nice and heavy whoops perfect uh perfect weight for winter they only had two pair in my size i figured i only needed one so i only bought one pair I also got, in addition to my chair, this. Now, I collect this stuff the way raccoons collect right. shiny pieces of gum wrapper to take down into their burrows, okay? I love this stuff, and what it is is this old china. This is a soup terrine. It's in very, very good condition. Um, no chips. Yep. It's completely chip free. I paid five dollars and forty five cents for it. Look at the beautiful um, uh, violets. You, uh, my grandma used to call oh, yeah, these yeah. sweet violet, or she'd call them yeah. yard violets. Um, she loved all types of violets, and I didn't even look to see who made it. It's Austrian. Uh, and it has a serial number on it. So anyway, I just loved it. I thought it was beautiful. Um, what am I going to do with it? I'm just going to own it and love it and look at it. I might put something in it. I might use it for dinner once or twice before I die. I don't know. I'm just going to love it. And this is the top. And again, it's a, it's a vitreous china. Um, just a nice, serviceable, little, beautiful little... Yeah, I like Super that idea. Okay. So, when we went to Daiso, I... It would make sense. Okay. When we went to Daiso, what I, was, what I had in my mind was, okay, number one, you need to buy felt, Cheryl, because Daiso sells the best felt anywhere, ever. It is wonderful. And so if you're going to buy felt, then I want you to think, Cheryl, I'm, I'm telling myself in my mind, um, think craft supplies, particularly craft tools, because there are some things that I didn't have that I've been improvising. And if I saw any, I was going to get them. Um, and then the other thing I really wanted were those glass refrigerator um, containers that have the snap top plastic lid. Um they're so much less expensive at Daiso than they are any place else I've ever seen them. And they're super heavy glass and very nicely engineered tops. They're just super nice. So, and they clamp on, they don't just snap on. Um, I bought some at, 
I don't know, 99 cent, I think it was, or maybe it was Target, it's Snap-on, um, which is fine, but the Clamp-on I like even better. You know those suckers aren't coming off. So anyway, um, that's what I was out looking for. Now let me show you what I bought. I bought some. All right, I'm going to start with this. This is a neck pillow. You put it behind your head if you're leaning against something. They say you're supposed, you know, this is for use um, in the car or whatever. I don't use it for that. I use it when I'm in my recliner. You guys know how recliners will they'll um, uh, sink, you know, if, if they're a few years old and all the stuffing will sink down. So when I'm sitting in my recliner and I'm sitting up, my head is still back like this, which is fine if I'm just kind of chilling. But if I want to do something or if I want to watch TV yeah, or anything yeah. like that, like, like, what I've been doing is I've been taking a book, this antique book that's over there on my table. And I'm taking this book, a hard book, right? And putting it back behind my neck and it, it gives me the perfect height. The only problem is I'll fall asleep and then I'll wake up and my head will be killing me because it's resting against this hard book. So I bought this thing and I'm going to be using this over in my recliner area. So that's what that's for. Now, I did buy a bunch of felt and let me show you. Um, I, these are these are a dollar fifty. They are and he's going to give you like 20 uh, 27 and a half <laughs> by 23 yeah. inches so, these rolls um much. and boy i tell you what i wish i wish you could i wish you could actually see the detail about why they're so much better but i'll just tell you the um the felting is very very tight and smooth and soft <laughs> unlike the felt squares that you get at uh, let's say walmart those <clears throat> Those are crappy compared to this. This is wonderful. So I got one each of red, a kind of a light yellow. I got dark blue. I'm just going to put these on the... I'll put these on the floor because I'm going to take them in the other room. I got a, a light tan. I got another bright pink. This was the very first color I bought. Um, and then I also got a dark brown. They were missing a few of their colors, obviously. The green wasn't there, the bright pink wasn't there, blah, blah, blah. But I bought one each of everything they had. Then, as I was coming around the corner, um, where they have all of their wrapping papers and um, gift bags and stuff, I found this handmade Japanese paper. It's a pink... I think it's called mulberry paper. It's got a, it's got like, um, see, you can see there's little twigs and fibers and stuff in it. I bought three of these, which probably isn't enough, but I will, I'll use it until I run out. I am making um, special Christmas cards this year. I know we're already into December and I haven't started them, but I'm going to make as many as I can. Um, and send them out, um, you know, to friends and family. So this pink is going to be the background for this card that I'm, I've designed. All right, so that's going to go down there on the floor. Oh, one other thing we got at, um, we got this at um, Grocery Out, no, Grocery Out, no, we got this at Daiso as well. Grant found this for me. It's this lovely rose gold, um, iPhone uh, charger and cord, and it's just beautiful, pretty color. I love it. So that's nice. And we bought that because the one that I have been using, uh, it broke. Not not my proprietary cord, but the extra cord, it broke. I also got some of this. Now, I can buy this stuff at... Uh, you know, at Dollar Tree here in town. I bought these though because all right, you have a wonderful day there. Because I suddenly had this idea for making there are two things that I want to make out of this. Um, one is a Christmas tree, and I thought I would finally put together my 
Pearl Garland with some of this, make a few Christmas trees. And then the other thing I thought was, it would be so fun to take this stuff and sew it on my slippers so that I have fuzzy marabou slippers. So I don't have enough to do that, but I, I will probably go to Dollar Tree and do that just because it's funny. That's all. I always wanted those marabou slippers. Okay, remember from the 1950s? They had the high heel. I want the kitten heel. I've told you guys this before. And then they have the, the toe part, and it's all marabou feathers about six times as long as these, and they waft around when you walk. Okay, I've always wanted those. Obviously, I'm not going to get them um, because good luck finding them. I mean, I found them in high heel. I can't find them in a short heel. Anyway, so why not just hot glue some of this crap onto my slippers and call it done. I think it's a great idea. So that's what I'm going to do um, eventually. But first the Christmas trees, because I'm all into making Christmas trees. Okay, another thing I got, I got this for a friend of mine for Christmas. These are arm sleeves. This one has a little cap on it. And this one, I love this one. This one has like a llama or an alpaca. Now, I have a friend, she's a redhead, she has very, very fair skin, and when she drives, her arms always, they're always in the sun and it bugs her, so she wears these arm sleeves. Um, she also wears them at work to stay warm, so, because she's a tiny little thing, you know, itty bitty little size small. So, I hope these arm sleeves aren't too, aren't too big for her. Anyway, I'm going to give these to her for Christmas. All right. I found this. Okay, I'm always using my plastic bags for garbage, and I'll hang it over a doorknob or something like this. This little dealie gives you a uh, like a little portable garbage can to take around. And I love this because when I'm cleaning or when I'm sewing or crafting or whatever, I like to be able to just dump my garbage into a little a little sack like this and you know throw it out but I'm always like where am I going to put the dang you know um bag where, where am I going to put it well this is where I'm going to put it on this little stand thingy I loved it another thing I got <clears throat> was a a kind of a bo bottle bottle and jar cleaner is what this is um Leanne got one too. She, she said she'd been looking for one of these and it never occurred to her to look at Daiso. So we both we both went home with one. And sometimes I have, a, I mean, I've got these big old fat hands, right? Sometimes I have a hard time getting my hand all the way down. Oh, thank you. I also got the light blue um, felt. Anyhow, these have a handle that... Um, You can make it long if you've got a long jar or keep it shorter. And I'll probably keep it this length most of the time. And it just seemed like a really useful thing. I mean, I've used, I have a bottle brush, but it's old and it's kind of crushed on one side. It really doesn't do the trick. I think this will do a better job. Okay. I also have... Now, <clears throat> every year I make... Um, or rather, I give my nieces um, a Christmas uh, uh, ornament. I've been doing it since they were born. So, and now they're in their 30s. So, I got enough bags so that I can bag up everyone's Christmas ornament and in this beautiful rose gold bag. So, that's what these are for. That's for my family's Christmas gifts. Um, all right, now let's take a look at some tools, crafting tools. These are just little, like, lingerie clothespins, they call them. But I, I have used these in the past as clamps. Like, if I, like with my uh, cards I'm going to make, I'm going to be gluing some things on them and then clamping and leaving them off to dry. 
this works so well for that for a dollar fifty. I also got another style I'll show you when I get down to that. Oh, here it is. I also got these smaller ones as well. So that's crafts uh, tools. I got um, this was a total impulse buy. This is a hand mask pack. And apparently it has gloves that are filled with something and you you pull them apart here and then you put them on and you wrap that around your hands and you leave them on. So that just seemed fun. I might I might do this when I do my next masking video for next week. I don't know. So that was impulse. Um, I also oh I found some other felt as well. This felt is um, gives a nice variety of color in these different tones of pink and of green and of blue. So that gives me some other color choices for when I'm making my little ornaments. Uh, another thing I found that I loved the colors on, I bought two of these. This particular um, embroidery floss there's something about it I really like the tones are very intense and the floss itself has a sort of a sheen to it it's not metallic or anything but it just has a sheen I love it so I'm gonna add that to my embroidery life something else I bought boy I tell you what I have been looking for these I'll find them sometimes at Michael's or Joann's or someplace, and they're expensive, so I don't buy them. Button cover kits. Look at how many are in there. You got 15 of the, um, of the smaller ones in this pack. You have 12 of the larger ones in this pack for $1.50. This is the deal of the century. If you have the need to oh thank you darling oh thank you darling our house is cold if you ever have the need to um cover buttons you know how expensive these are so i was thrilled to find them at such a great price i also got some more cupcake um liners because the cupcake liners that i have are from uh dollar tree and from this no name mom and pop dollar store i used to shop at and they're very old, and when I use them, I don't really like them. Um, so I thought I would give Daiso's pretty little pastel cupcake um, liners a try. Oh, I also bought another bag for my cards. Now, I have not done... Where are my cards? I have not done um, card reading in a while. Those of you who follow my card reading channel know that I have been blocked. But I bought this bag when I was at Daiso last year. And this bag holds my, my wonderful cards that I've been using to read from. As well as some matches to start my, um, you know, what's that thing? To start my candle and it holds a few other things as well so what I'm going to do is put a different set of cards that had been in there these are my gypsy uh, fortune telling cards that I made just a quick just a very quick dupe of just by hand because I the cards are antique I didn't want to screw them up while I was learning to read them um, so I'm going to keep that in here along with my information about how to read just a regular poker deck so I've got my little collection now of card bags if they'd had a different I need about I need two more sets of bags I'll probably just make them but if um if they'd had them, I would have bought a couple more in different um, designs and been done with it. But that's okay. That works out really well. Um, 
I got a crochet hook to fill in my set. I bought a nose strip mask. I should put this on right now, huh? My skin is so dry. Um, let's see. Yeah, no. I'd clean, I clean. I have to go wash my face before I use it. So anyhow, no strip mask. I don't know. I might use it in a masking video. Not sure. Um, okay, craft punch. This is a uh, a cherry blossom is what that is. That's a cherry blossom punch. And so you can see it up there in the red. I've never. I don't have. I have punches, but I didn't have anything small like this. Well. When I was at Leanne's, I was looking at, um, it was either Pinterest or, or YouTube, and there was a, uh, a series of Christmas ornaments that were all pink. And what this gal did is she took or just a round styrofoam ball, she painted it with glitter or something, and then she punched out a bunch of these little cherry blossoms up here um, out of some sort of like shiny paper and she simply pinned them all the way around this um, ball and put a big bow on the top and it was so adorable so I went ahead and got a craft punch because I want to do that Grant bought me this I'm not sure why it's a double hook it's a double hook and I thought well you know what I'm going to put this in the junk drawer with my other hooks, and someday I'm going to need it. So I'm glad he bought it. He also bought, because he was hungry while we were shopping, <laughs> um, some rice crackers. Um, uh, nori maka, maka arare? Nori, ma, nori, nori maki arare. Rice cracker with seaweed. And... One has, uh, neither of these have wasabi in them, but he also bought a pack with wasabi as well. I think he opened that and started eating it. Um, I got myself some haichu in, in, uh, in this caramel apple flavor. I've never seen it in caramel apple, and that's because it is a limited edition just for Christmas and then I also got a couple of things of this you guys remember this Botan rice candy when you were little I, my dad used to bring this stuff home um, and I don't know I saw it and it was like oh home so I got two of those and another caramel apple high chew and Some face wipes. In fact, I think I'm going to use one right now. I love these things. These makeup remover cleansing tissues. And these are in rose flavor. And they smell so wonderful. I really like a single note perfumey flavors of, of different kinds of flowers. I love rose. I love lily of the valley. My absolute favorite is violet. That is my favorite single note. I also love carnation. So yeah. So anyhow, um, I had one uh, packet of these left that I, you know, I purchase them here and there and I use them for all kinds of stuff, not just cleaning my face. But I had one package left and I opened it up the other day. I knew it was old, so I was going to use it to clean small pieces of things that I was putting away. And the thing had, um, it had dried up. So, so I just got one little packet this time. And I'm sure I will find a bunch of dried up packets somewhere. I have to learn how not to buy too much of something that's a, that's a, that has a shelf life, you know, because half the time I only use a portion of the things that I buy before they go bad and there's absolutely no economy in that at all so anyway mm, love the smell love the way it, love the freshness 
I also, here are the glass things that I was telling you about. Man, I love these. I bought four of them. I would have bought the larger sizes as well, but they were out. They just had about 12 of these small ones left on the shelf, and that was it. Oh, there we go. Either wasabi or otherwise. Okay, I showed him that one already. So here's the wasabi one, and yeah, this one's been opened. So yeah, this, this is the spicier of these little rice crackers. Thank you, darling. But it gets you some iodine. It does. It gets you some iodine. The last thing I wanted to show you, another total impulse buy, is the... Where's my dang glasses? Okay. This is the LA Colors um, Mermaid Magic Iridescent Nail Polish. Now I have a mermaidy nail polish that you guys have, a lot of you guys have seen me wear. And um, so did I need to buy this? Heck no. Of course I didn't need to. I just did because it made me happy. So it makes you makes me realize you have to have a budget for the makes me happy stuff. If all you do is buy things that make you happy, then, you know, you won't have toilet brushes and, you know, crap like that because you're always spending your money on wasabi and nail polish and, you know, old china. So, I've been trying to be a little more careful. And I actually have been a little more careful. Most of this stuff has a reason for being. But the stuff that doesn't have a reason for being like this, I love that too. So, there we go. That is my Daiso Michaels grocery outlet haul. <laughs> and I did have such a lovely time. So, um, yeah, I'm going to quit babbling at you. Go and watch Leanne's videos if you are a mind, too. And I will talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.